Got a question from Kim. Um, Kim, uh, that's a nice name. That was my best friend growing up. So there you go. In episode 215, at minute 2928, exactly at that moment, I tell Alfonso, this is going to be a really good training program. Kim asks, are you okay? I thought pretty good was the pinnacle we could all hope to strive for. Well, thank you, Kim. I will, I will make sure my hyperbole is kept under control from now on. Now, the question from Kim. Now to my serious question, how would you traditional deadlift cues, how would your traditional deadlift cues differ from the trap bar cues you gave in episode 215? Okay, I mean, for the real barbell deadlift, uh, the advice I got from Dick Notmeyer, the first time I ever deadlifted heavy, which was just to break the gym record, as I walked, as I was walking up the bar, he said, ho, ho, Instead of having your hands like this, you know, have one hand like this. That's all the training I've ever had on the deadlift. So uh, I wouldn't want to say um, uh, I will over cue you in this answer. With the barbell deadlift, uh, I think one of the most important things you understand is that uh, a lot of people naturally will round their backs on barbell deadlifts. Uh, I used to think it was a horrible thing until I had a very good deadlifter tell me that it's actually an advantage in that one lift. So the first thing with the barbell deadlift, I'll get to the trap part in just a second, is realize that we're talking about the barbell deadlift. We're not talking about the preparation for a snatch or a clean, but we're talking about a maximal pick the weight up and stand tall with it movement. If you even go back in time and look at Bob Peoples, uh, he was one of the great early pioneers of the deadlift. You'll notice his shoulders are fairly round as he's pulling them off. Uh, when you look at someone who's born to deadlift, uh, I'm thinking Vince Anello, Lamar Gant uh, uh, from history. And then you look at the sumo style of Ed Cohen. One of the things you start to pick up on is there's a lot of ways to deadlift, barbell deadlift heavily. Barbell deadlift has is going to have some variations depending on your height. Now, the advantage, if you want, and it's in uh, Bosco, uh, Harry Pascal's book, uh, The Secrets of Strength, I think. He's got this little picture of the perfect types, and he's got this guy with really long traps and extremely long arms and little short trunk and little short legs as being the idea, ideal deadlifter. And there's some truth to that. I mean, if you can get your hands on the barbell, and you're almost standing up already, you're gonna probably, you're gonna have a chance to be a better deadlifter. And if you have that freakish grip strength, a lot of people seem to be born with, that seems to help. So when it comes to the deadlift, there's gonna be some specific personal variations you're gonna have. Now, a lot of people might not agree with me on that, but I, I just, I've talked to too many power lifters and seen too many videos and read too many books with just enough subtle differences that I think when you look at the deadlift, there are gonna be some aspects of it that are gonna be unique to you. Your startup position, um, you know, the first, when I deadlifted my max, and uh, it was at three o'clock in the morning on a Sunday morning, uh, the powerlifting meet started at 9 a.m. on Saturday. I didn't deadlift until three in the morning, and I was wearing Olympic lifting boots because I didn't know any better. So. You know, I was way forward with the barbell and I tried to lift it like a clean grip, clip, clean grip deadlift and I pulled a 628, which is a pretty good deadlift considering the circumstances. But I guarantee my technique was not, you know, the kind of technique you'd want uh, if you were going to take the a power lifting competition seriously. <sighs> Talking to a lot of my friends who were power lifters back in the day, one of the things that they talked about more wasn't so much where your hands were as where your feet were. There are people who are built, and this I think would be fortunate, to do the sumo deadlift. Uh, if you're built uh, with an ability to do the sumo style, I think it's actually, I mean, it's, when I look at it, it looks to me like a lot simpler move than my narrow foot, narrow hand stance uh, deadlifts uh, were when I did it. So first, with the barbell deadlift, just realize there's going to be some some personal changes you're going to have to think about. Um, I think I think it's probably better to deadlift in well, 
barefoot probably would be a good idea, but maybe like a ballet shoe or a, a Converse All-Star, uh, you know, a kettlebell shoe, something that's got no, um, no lift at all in the heel, something that you really have ground contact, foot, your foot can feel the surface. I think that's really important. With your grip, um, you know, one thing about deadlifting, it, I think it's one of the biggest hits on the nervous system there is. So, you know, deadlifting more on, you know, like for me, I, what does it seem? It seems like I deadlift every couple decades. Uh, I can recover from that. But if you're deadlifting a lot, you know, your grip training has to really uh, reflect that. Um, one of the reasons I think kettlebells and pull-ups help uh, deadlifting, kettlebell swings and pull-ups, is because it it not just helps your grip strength, the pull-ups and the swing, but it also helps the condition of your skin. Uh, one of the issues with big deadlifts is that it the that neural barbell starts to you know pull your skin off, uh, and it can be kind of disgusting to be honest with you. So. There's gonna be some individual things. I strongly recommend flat, flat shoes or barefoot. I strongly recommend you take your time figuring out what's a comfortable stance for you, where your feet should be. Um, you know, I experimented with heels together deadlifts and I found them actually pretty good. Um, I, I was surprised how well I did on that. But of course, I'm kind of a natural hinger. And for me, uh, it, was a, it was a comfortable stance. So my heels are together versus the guys who are sumo and their, their feet are, you know, yards across, a much, much wider stance. You might have to experiment with your grip a little bit, though generally I would say that natural grip that flows basically straight down from the shoulder joints is where you want to be. Um, and then you're going to have to think about the condition of your, your grip for holding power and the condition of your grip as for the skin uh, qualities. So you don't rip skin when you do it. When we contrast that with the trap bar deadlift, I see the trap bar deadlift much more like, at least in the position of a traditional Olympic lift, your shoulders should be back, your chest should be proud. Uh, I like a little bit of a head up feeling. I like the weight in the heels and you push and you, it becomes more like a leg press where you're, you're pushing the floor away, not necessarily lifting the bar up. Uh, when you're doing a trap bar deadlift, just try one set. Now, if you don't like it, you know, stop, but try this idea where you're driving your heels into the ground as hard as you can. And, and the mental image of thinking a uh, leg press, and as you clear, you're just gonna crane that back up. Th that's how I teach it. Um, the trap bar deadlift isn't nearly as vicious on the hands because of the position. I find this this neutral grip for pull-ups and uh, the trap bar, uh, hex bar deadlift to be very good. It's a very natural position for me to lift. Um, so when I do pull-ups in the gym sometimes, uh, you know, we got the big, the big thing here, but we got the two posts that hold it. I do a lot of my pull-ups there. The only problem is my face is now going right into a bar but I find it much more comfortable and I find the trap bar deadlift grip much more comfortable. One issue with the trap bar is now they're coming with higher and higher and higher handles. So it's becoming more and more of a pure hinge now. Uh, did I say that was a problem? Cause it's really not a problem, but it gets you farther and farther away from what a deadlift is. And more and more you start to do almost a rack deadlift, almost a, almost a, some of the kettlebell swing movements I teach in the progression, I call one the Bulgarian coat bag swing. It becomes more like that for the hinge position where you're really not doing that that transition. So where I'm, I'm taking the, the weight off the floor and then there's that moment where I have to clear the knees and then, you know, some things happen, which of course has been the issue with almost every uh, lifter who's over a certain height for a long, long time. So th those would be my pieces of advice. Um, I, I, I'm a fan, right now my favorite two deadlifts, if you, if you made me say you gotta choose two, um, would be the snatch grip deadlift, and I learned that you know in the 1970s at the Pacifica Barbell Club. Um, I always thought there was a great value in that. I always thought 
the snatch grip deadlift with my hands, basically collar to collar. I always felt that was a really good discus throwing exercise because I was out, I was in a position that felt like the strength I needed at the throw. At the top with my hands wide, it felt to me like that strong position I need to finish the implement in that position we call 3C in the way I teach the discus. Uh, the other one is the deficit deadlift. Now, I was never a big fan of deficit deadlift, and then I watched some things. Uh, Brett Contreras explained the deficit deadlift a little bit better. And I once I realized that the deficit deadlift is a swing, uh, a hinge, uh, it really helped me. Um, I, I It weirdly puts very little pressure on my lower back because I'm constantly pushing my butt back, my butt back, my butt back, and I stay in this nice little cylinder of strength as I do the lift. I don't know where I would put the traditional straight bar deadlift and the hex bar, but for my needs, I usually get them taken care of with the snatch grip and the deficit. Now on the deficit, it's a very light load. You know, we're looking at uh, 40, 50, 60 kilos. You know, we're looking at 85 to 135 pounds. So maybe one of the things I like about the deficit deadlift is I don't go very heavy, so I don't get too broken. So uh, I hope that answered your question and uh, I appreciate it. That's, that's, that's a good question, Kim. Thank you.